Hey everybody. So, first of all, thank you to everybody backing the Kickstarter right now. I'm blown away by how beautifully it's been going. Thank you so much. Also want to give a quick shout out to my buddy Bill Semph, who is screencasting in his field, which is software engineering. Uh, I think that's not my field, so I'm kind of clueless about it. But he and I have been trading videos back and forth, so uh, thank you to him for the encouragement to keep going on these. Today we're going to be talking about the Schlage Primus and how we attack it. Now there are a lot of people on the Kickstarter who are interested in seeing a high security lock broken down, shown the pieces of it, see how it works, understand new locking concepts. Happy to oblige. There are a lot of people who wanted to see how I attacked the Schlage Primus at the DEF CON 18 conference a couple of weeks ago. Also happy to oblige. And I'm glad that we can kill two birds with one stone. There are a couple of other things that are going to come into play here. Uh, one is master keying, because we're talking about institutional security, which inherently means master keying. Uh, that's something that we'll have to discover in another time. Hopefully you know a little bit about it, but it's probably worth looking up to see why it's so easy to defeat the low security mechanism in these locks. Okay, so the attack we're discussing today is super simple, but it illuminates a serious problem in high security lock engineering, and one that most companies have done a good job of overcoming uh, by making their primary locking mechanism it's secure and sometimes as secure as the secondary mechanism. In the Schlage Primus, the secondary mechanism is a sidebar. And it's operated by these cuts in the blade of the key right along here. Those operate a series of finger pins that I'll show you in a close-up in a minute. Now, here's a normal Schlage key. And this is probably something that a lot of you have seen before. And there's some actually really cool things about the Schlage system. In particular, that their normal locks, not the Primus's, work very nicely in concert with the Primus locks. I.e., here's your key to, you know, random Schlage at the company, but your master key needs to operate both the high security locks in your system and your low security locks. Well, it still fits. It's not operating a sidebar, it doesn't need to, but it still fits in the lock and still works with the master key system, which actually very nicely illustrates the point of our attack. This sidebar has nothing to do with master keying. The sidebar for every high security lock at your facility will be exactly the same. The master keying happens across the normal pin tumbler mechanism in the lock. And unfortunately for Schlage, they have a really terrible, very simple, uh, it's what we hand out to people to practice, low security pin tumbler mechanism. So. If you take your key that operates your office door or the front door of the building, a lot of people end up having a key that operates the front door of the building but doesn't operate anything else serious, but it's still a high security key. So now, by taking that key and cutting it down so that you only have the finger pins, you have an all access pass to the rest of the building. I cannot stress enough, the most important part of this attack is that this is universal. This is the same for the entire building. All of the master keying is done across the normal pins. So we're going to go to a couple of close-ups and show you how these work. Okay, so I'm just going to disassemble the uh, Primus here real quick so you can see how it actually operates inside. I might speed some of this up on camera. Always placing my spring and, uh, and cap and everything all together so I don't lose those later on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the key in this. Turn that out of position. And I'm going to use a plug from another lock as my plug follower. Of course I knocked those over. And I'm keeping my thumb on the back side here, otherwise this sidebar will spring right out at you. See how it sprung? Okay. I'm going to drop that out and show you how this works. So there are two little springs in here that would typically push the sidebar back out all the time, and I just removed those. The teeth of the sidebar those little gaps in there fit around teeth in here. You can see very clearly that they all line up appropriately. And when I pull it out even one 
position, they're no longer perfectly lined up. And if I pull it out a few, you can see some interesting things. <clears throat> so they all go to different heights and different rotations. So what's actually happening with those little cuts in the side of a key is that it not only lifts up those pins, but it also changes the direction they're facing. So the key fully in, you can see they're all facing directly outward. Now I'm going to carefully remove this key. And insert our little sidebar key. There we go. So once again, with this in there, you can see it all still stays nice and flush. And this sidebar will still fit right back in around those teeth. So we have the key and the sidebar and each of the finger pins which I've rotated so you can see how those little gates line up and the springs and the chambers that everything fits into. So now I'm just going to reassemble everything and we'll pick it. So the Primus is back together and the key still works beautifully in it. Tailpiece on so we don't uh, screw it up when we pick it. And uh, have a listen to this. Isn't that nice? I love the sound of the little key setting the finger pins. Okay, just applying a little top tension. And there's still plenty of room to work. You can see there's, uh, there's tons of room to work in there. Because the key stays all the way at the bottom of the lock. Now a lot of people like to actually turn the key into their tension wrench. Personally, I find because there's plenty of room to work, and I much prefer top tension anyway, uh, that I just get all three tools in there. <laughs> it's open already. It's, uh, that's it. That's it. Yeah, look at that. Simple. Regional sidebar coding is something that a lot of people don't know much about and most integrated security systems really don't take seriously. I just saw Schlage Primus is put in all over a, a hospital that I was at recently. Um, it was a big disappointment. They're, they're terrible for institutional security. There are a lot of great options out there. In fact, the ASA Twin Combi, uh, which operates on a very similar mechanism, in fact, the person who patented the Schlage Primus fingerprints is the same guy behind the patent on the ASA Twin. However, their primary locking mechanism, their, the, the normal pin tumbler mechanism is really nice. They have high security pins in there, they have counter milling, it's incredibly difficult to pick. It's nearly the same lock, but they just put more thought into making that primary locking mechanism secure so that if the sidebar is, is you know, completely subverted, it doesn't matter. You still have a lot to get through. It's not an easy attack. Um, so this original sidebar coding is something that almost every high security lock manufacturer that uses a sidebar has to deal with. But most of them do a much more elegant job of it and most of them still have higher security. I mean, it's still difficult to pick because the primary mechanism is very high security.